Hello there. What you are looking at before you is my very own original Max MSP patch. What it is, is a word step sequencer. And what that means is, unlike most step sequencers, where the pattern has to be manually input by the user, through mine, with the use of words in different letter combinations based off of Morse code, unique rhythmic patterns will be generated all on its own. So I'm going to walk you through how I made this patch through a video tutorial, so let us begin. Okay, we're going to start over here with the case ladder, and what that does in my patch is allow you to select all the musical pitches you want for your pattern. First off, you want to set how long you want the pattern to be, in this case we'll do four, input the pitches on the keyboard, boom, there you can see the message box filling up with all the notes you just selected. Now you also notice this number box here is hooked up to the ZL group object, specifically in the right inlet, and basically what that dictates is the maximum number of items this object is going to receive before it outputs as a list, so in this case being four. So after it received the four notes from the case slider, it grouped it up and output as a list into this prepend one. That puts a one before the sequence, which I'll explain momentarily, and then shoots it to the ZL reg right here, acting as a register storing the list. Now when this object receives a bang in its left inlet, it'll output to whatever it's connected to, in this case being the coal steps, which will store all the steps of your pattern, and you can view them right here. There they are. There's a one earlier from the prepend. Now if we move over here, we notice that the number box is hooked up to this floating number object. That just stores a value. What's really important is what it's hooked up to here being the max dollar sign one message. Max standing for maximum, and dollar sign one acts as a variable that can be replaced with anything, so in this case four. So max four. Now, it's hooked up to this counter object, and what the counter does is keeps track of all the bangs it receives and counts them. But in this special case, being hooked up to the max 4, it's only going to count up to 4 before it resets itself, which is as long as our pattern is, which is the point. Now, you'll notice it's hooked up to this metro object, and that just acts as a metronome, which, depending on the tempo, will dictate how fast the bangs are sent through and how fast it's going to cycle through our pattern. As the bangs are shot out the counter, it's routed through this nth1 dollar sign one message. And that sort of just acts as a special function for the coal, specifying the address and being able to retrieve what's on that. So, in this case, 1 being row 1, and then dollar sign 1, which acts as our pattern. So, row 1, and there's our pattern. Now, if we click the button, we're going to notice that every time the counter shoots out the bangs to the end each one, it's going to cycle through the pattern. And boom, there's our pattern right there, cycling through. Okay. Now we're going to move on to the step sequencer and keyboard and how those function. If we scroll over here, we'll notice a basic computer keyboard layout, much like the one probably in front of you. Click on the buttons, they'll show up in the word boxes. You can even type on your keyboard and they'll register the same way. I did that by this key object over here. Every button on the keyboard has its own specific number which triggers it, so I filtered them all through these select objects. Well that's great and all, but what makes my patch so unique in my opinion is how it's based off of Morse code. Let's stop and think about Morse code for a second. Every letter in Morse code has its own unique combination of dots and dashes. In this instance, which I dragged to the side so you can see a little bit clearer, the letter Q is dash dash dot dash. So I thought to myself, how can I combine Morse code in my sequencer patch to make a seamless music interface? I went through many different thought processes like dots could be white notes, dash could be black notes, until I stumbled upon the most logical one being note off, note on. Dash representing note off and dot note on. Simple, right? So now if I were to click the button Q, it would send out a bang into this integer, wirelessly transmitting into this receive Q object so it's marked and targeted for Q. It'll send out a bang through this button and then shoot into this gate right here. And what the gate is used for is basically to specify which outlet you want the bang to go through. So depending on what it's hooked up to, in this case being number one, it's going to shoot that bang out of outlet one. So now we're going to click the letter Q and see what happens. As you'll notice, there's a pattern, dash, dash, dot, dash. Shout out the first outlet into the first slot of the step sequencer. Now, each time that you click a new letter on the keyboard, it's going to register by this counter here, moving sequentially up to the next number. So now that you, if you were to click it again, it's going to shoot that pattern into slot two, and so on and so forth. So if we just click it a bunch of times, you notice that the whole sequencer is filled up. Now, as far as the step sequencer goes, it's made of 32 steps. Eight sections of four, which I color coded so you could see a little bit better. Each individual slot is made of four units. So how Q falls in the right place at the right time is basically because I hand wired them to each individual slot. And keep in mind, I had to do this for all the other letters as well. So if it was letter C, I had to wire dash dot dash dot to all the slots as well for every single letter in the alphabet. So whenever you click it, 
it'll fall in the right place at the right time, depending on the word. So if I were to type the word in quit, Q-U-I-T, Q would be the first letter falling in the first slot, right? Now, as far as how, how the sequencer knows how to reset itself after the word is played through, I did that over here through this separate counter. Every time that you click a, a button on the keyboard, it's counted by this counter, but unlike the other counter, it's multiplied by four by this little slider bar. So you click the first letter, you get four, the second one, eight, you know, going through the sections of four in the 32 step sequencer. Get it? Now, if I didn't create this counter, then as soon as you were to hit the button on the sequencer turning on the metronome starting up the counter, it would only cycle through the first step of the sequencer no further. That is simply because it's set to one one, being minimum one, maximum one. The reason I did this is because I want the length of the word you type in to determine the max count on the counter, not how many steps there are on the sequencer. So if you were to type in a word of three letters, being 4A12 because of the multiplier, it's going to cycle through all 12 steps and restart itself instead of carrying on through the whole 32 steps with a lot of empty space. So now I'm going to talk about the step sequencer again in a little bit more detail. So if we look closer at my sequencer, you notice that it comprises of 32 of these little gate systems. I dragged one aside so you can see a little bit better. Now, if we remember earlier when we hit the letter Q, it inputted into the first slot dash dash dot dash. Well, whenever there's a dot in the letter, it's going to turn on these toggle switches, which if you notice are hooked up to all the gate systems. When the toggle switch is turned on, it basically opens up the gate allowing anything to pass through it, so in this case being a bang. When the bang passes through the gate, it goes to the send note right here. The send note is hooked up to this integer, which if you recall from earlier, is what we cycled through with the case letter, our pattern. So depending on whatever particular point in time it happens to be in the pattern, so in this case when I stopped it, it was 53, when that send note is clicked at the same time, it's going to send that note of 53 to this R note here where it receives it through this trigger into the make note, which is where you hear the note. Now keep in mind, when I turn on the sequence, it's still going to cycle through all the buttons emitting bangs. Just some are going to make it to the send note and some won't, depending on whether the gate is open or not. So back to the make note. In the first inlet, we have pitch control, so depending on the number, it's going to play that pitch. Second is velocity, how hard or how soft. And the third inlet is uh, duration, how long or how short. That's hooked up to a pack 0 object here, which just sort of condenses it into a list. And then that's hooked up to a MIDI format, which leads me to my next subject being rewiring. One of the great bonus features I think my patch has to offer is the rewiring capabilities. Being able to hook up to DAWs like Reason or Logic offer a whole new realm of sound possibilities and different sequence techniques. So as I was mentioning earlier, we have the make note here hooked up to the pack, the MIDI format, the thresh, prepend MIDI 01. Basically all that means is it's taking the make note messages and turning them into MIDI messages so another program will understand them. So let's open up Reason. You can see Reason has automatically went into rewire slave mode, hooking itself up to max. We'll upload the Thor. Load a preset. Go to advanced MIDI. Channel 1, make sure Thor is selected. Go back to uh, Max. Select Reason. Select which channels it's hooked up to. So in this case, mix left, mix right. Set the volume slider. Turn on the audio. And then set it in presentation mode. Ah, much better looking, right? Alright, first let's set how long I want the sequence to be. We'll do 5. And put the notes on the keyboard. Boom, there's the sequence. We set a little bit of a slower tempo. And type in a word. Okay, so now we'll hit the spacebar and watch it go. And there we go. There's our musical sequence right there, based off the word relish. Can also make it go backwards. forwards and backwards. Change the octave. Set the duration. And if we find a preset that we like, we can also even save it. All you do is hold down the button shift and click the dot. And there you go, there's your sequence right there. So watch what happens. We'll reset it. All gone. Click our preset. Boom. Right back. And then you can even write it to file and then open it in your computer. 
How I added the extra features like uh, the sequence of direction, octave transposition, is pretty simple too, so I'll go through that very quickly. As far as the direction the sequence will play, that's basically determined by these buttons as you saw previously. These are hooked up to these numbers, 0, 1, 2, and 3, hooked up to the counter. It basically, depending on which number you select, it'll determine the direction it goes. Over here is how I did the octave transposition, and basically this uh, pitch control right here is hooked up through this gate first, and depending on uh, which uh, gate you select, you can see they're all hooked up to numbers. Minus 48, minus 24, minus 12, plus 12, plus 24. And basically all that does is we'll either add or subtract from the number going through the pitch control here, either making it go an octave up or an octave down. So yes, basically that is my uh, patch in a nutshell, and I hope you guys enjoyed it, and thank you very much for your time.